systems of the body we're all pretty familiar with by this time in your life is the digestive system. And uh, I want to take some time to discuss why we have it. And I'll let you think about that for a minute. Uh, why do we have a digestive system? What does digestion mean? Well, digestion is to break down food mechanically, which means break it up into pieces, and chemically. And we want to do that. We want to, we're taking food and remember that food is a molecule. Food is a giant packed together set of molecules and we need to break those molecules down to molecules that can be transported throughout the body. Okay, that's the job of digestive system is to break down your food and get it into well what we use to transport things throughout the body into the bloodstream. Now to be able to do that you've got to take this big Snickers bar and chop it up into smaller and smaller pieces. You got to chop up the sugar, you got to chop up the fat, you got to chop up the peanuts, the protein, you got to chop it down and uh, make sure that can get into the bloodstream. How does it happen? Well, here are the, this is a simple diagram of the digestive system, which you have to fill out yourself with the major organs of the digestive system on it. Okay? The mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, liver and pancreas, small and large intestine, synonym for the large intestine is colon, uh, rectum, and anus. So that's the passage the food, and most of you know this, you eat your food with your mouth, and whatever you don't use comes out your anus. Along the way, we're going to talk about what happens to it. Function. And we're going to simplify some of these, and we can talk about some of this in a little more detail in class. Uh, the function of your mouth is to break down food with saliva in your teeth. Okay, uh, here's a picture of a mouth, and you have these different kinds of teeth. Why do you have different kinds of teeth? Well, you have your front teeth your incisors to incise means to cut or chop then you have these big thick teeth two over your canine teeth or your cuspids and then the rest of the teeth have these big broad flat oh what are canine teeth for I'm sorry well they're for tearing Right? If you've eaten a piece of beef jerky and you want to rip it off to chew on it, you tear it with your canines. You pull it to the side of your mouth and tear it. Then you have these other big flat teeth, premolars and molars, that you use to grind your food with. You chew off that piece of beef jerky, you move it to the back of your mouth with your tongue, and you grind up the food. Saliva contains an enzyme called amylase and we're going to be talking about enzymes in some detail a little bit later and we'll take a look at amylase closer in class that breaks down starch to sugar so your mouth's job is to take the food in and break it down let's take a look at this animation a second to watch how this works and if you access this PowerPoint online, you can check out this animation too. Slide this down. Turn off the audio. You see you have salivary glands under your mouth. Here. Back it up. And up above your, in the back of your throat. As you chew your food, saliva is put on it, and then you trigger the muscles of swallowing. And you see that two things happen. Your soft palate flops up, specifically a part of it called the uvula. We'll come back to that, and I'll point it out on the other slide. And as you swallow the food, your epiglottis, right there, flips down, covering up the pathway to your lungs. Move this a little faster. 
and then food moves into your esophagus and then along into your stomach and we'll stop it there for we'll pause it there for now this little dangly thing back here in the back of your throat whoops sorry about that is called the uvula uh, and the uvula helps close off the opening to your nose when you swallow. Esophagus. Once you swallow food, it brings food to your stomach using a word called peristalsis. The nice thing about digestive system is once you swallow your food, it's done. You don't have to think about it anymore. It's on its way. The reason it's on its way is a series of rippling wave-like muscle contractions called peristalsis. If we uh, take a look at an example of peristalsis here with this animation, okay, it's a wave of muscle contractions that squeeze food along. Okay, and I'll just let this keep playing a minute. And this happens in all of your tubes in your digestive system. Peristalsis happens in every tube in your digestive system. From there, food moves into your stomach. Now, a lot of people think that their stomach, so a lot of people call your abdomen area your stomach, and that's not true. Your stomach is a J-shaped organ located on the left side of your abdomen, just below your rib cage. If you find the bottom of your rib cage, kind of up under the ribs a little bit, and then uh, goes down about four inches or so, it continues to break down a food, I'm sorry, by grinding it up. Your stomach grinds on the food uh, to turn it into uh, smaller pieces. Your stomach is very muscular. You can see there are three muscle layers on your stomach on this diagram right here. Okay, And one that runs this way, one that runs on an angle, and one that runs, ar runs around to grind up the food. You also have stomach acid, which maybe you, all, maybe you know about. Uh, if you've ever burped up a little stomach acid into your esophagus, that burns. The reason the acid doesn't burn your stomach is your stomach is lined with mucus, a thick layer of sort of like saliva that keeps the stomach acid from eating away at the wall of your stomach. But if you burp that acid up in your esophagus, I like to do I do that a lot when I eat. I love Kentucky Fried Chicken, but Kentucky Fried Chicken, when after I eat that, I burp up stomach acid into my esophagus. That causes a condition called heartburn. And there are also other enzymes in your stomach that help break up your food. So as your food is done in your stomach, it's going to be moved out of your stomach through a little valve into the uh, small intestine. As it's doing that, it passes by two organs. One is the liver. As food passes into your small intestine here, the liver has something called bile to your food. Bile helps break up fat. Bile is green. You may have seen bile if you've ever vomited a lot. And sometimes you vomit enough things out of your some of your contents of your small intestine at the beginning come out. And you get a little bile mixed in. So your liver's function in digestion is to break up fat, to add bile to your food. But notice that food doesn't go, this diagram doesn't really show it, but food doesn't go through your liver. The second organ that helps out, here's the liver shown up here and very diagrammatic. And here's where your stomach would have been. And the food's coming in here. There's a little duct that brings stuff from the pancreas. Pancreatin is the stuff from the pancreas, hence the name pancreatin. Contains enzymes to break down sugars, fats, and proteins. Well, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, the three major nutrients that you need to survive. So the pancreas's job in digestion is to add this stuff to the food. It also uh, changes the pH of the food. It's very acidic after it leaves the stomach and it neutralizes it. So now food is totally in your small intestine. It's had all these enzymes added to break it up and it passes into the small intestine. 
The small intestine's job is to absorb nutrients into the bloodstream. A lot of people think when you get into school that this is the stomach's job, and it's not. It's the small intestine. If you could look at the small intestine, the inside of it, it would look like this. With food passing through here, and the sides of it are very rippled, and they're trying to show that right here. And not only are they rippled, the ripples have ripples. Those ripples are finger-like projections called villi. Villi absorb nutrients into the bloodstream. Carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, each villus, singular is villus, has a blood vessel associated with it in the fold. And, those, and food then, as the finger-like structures kind of food kind of passes over here and gets down in here, these absorb nutrients directly into the bloodstream through the villi. So your small intestine is about 23 feet long. Over that 23 feet, it's squeezing food along. Okay, food is being food is being squeezed along through here, and as it is, it's being absorbed. Nutrients are being absorbed. And from there it passes into your large intestine. The large intestine is shown here. Called large, not because it's long, it's only six feet long. Well, only it's got a jam inside of your in your stomach, but because of its width. So food passes out of the small intestine into the large intestine. It's no longer food. It's pretty much all the nutrients are taking out of it. The only thing you have to get out, the job of the large intestine is to absorb water and vitamins from your food. So food passes into the large intestine, and it kind of sits there for a while. Then your large intestine does what's called a mass movement, where it'll do peristalsis all at once and move food along. And, f and what's left goes up the ascending colon, across the transverse colon, down the descending colon, through the sigmoid colon. It gets stored in the rectum. And then when it's time to leave, the anus lets it out. And we talked about sphincter muscles at the beginning of the year. There's a round muscle here that you've learned to hold shut now that you're potty trained. And when you relax that long muscle, you let the food out, or let the waste out. And again, uh, we'll talk about this, this uh, link in class that's on here, or you can uh, open the PowerPoint and look at it yourself. So that's a summary of the digestive system.